So I want to note, first of all, that I am still filtered down to the group type of small groups. So when I hit the new group button, my group type is automatically set as small group. So I have a new group uh, uh, leader, uh, Wentz, I believe is their last name. Um, so let's call it Wentz small group. And we'll add it to the small group group type and I'll create a group. And then there's really two different paths that you would usually take uh, when you're creating a small group. If you want to just go straight into viewing the settings and changing the settings, you could do that, or you can add people. I'm gonna add person um, because uh, what really, like I think as an administrator, if I'm adding people to a group, what I really need to do is just add my one leader. And then all the members, they sign up on Church Center or are being added directly by the uh, leader themselves. So really all as an admin, I need to do is add as a leader and let's search for that Wentz. I believe that is Aubrey. Yep, there we go, Aubrey. And we can choose to notify. Um, you should definitely do that. I'm not gonna do that because this isn't a person. <laughs> this is just for you and me. <laughs> but anyway, I just added my leader. There we go. Um, now let's walk through a couple other things. I'm just gonna briefly show this events tab. These are where events exist and you can create new events. But again, in the same way with leaders, if you're an admin, you don't wanna come in and create an event per group. You either want your leader to create that event or you want to create events in bulk. And I'm gonna show you a better, faster way to do that. So we're gonna skip over events here. Um, resources, just so you know, because this was in the group type, we already had some shared resources that automatically get added per group type. So they're automatically there. But if I need to, as an admin, add another one, I could do that right there. And then let's jump into settings. Now, a, there's a lot of different settings here. And a lot of these are already pre-filled out. Do you know why? That's right, that was settings in the group type. Good on you, give yourself a pat on the back. So, um, so I don't have to fill out all of these settings every single time. The group type defaults automatically uh, made that happen. But I just wanna point out a few settings that are important that are mostly not in the group type that you might wanna change. The first one is if you wanna turn on group messaging. I definitely encourage that. That's you know the heartbeat of the of the, the group itself is for them to be able to communicate with each other. Um, but a setting that you may or may not know is you can have the ability to only allow leaders to create new messages. Um, so only new only leaders can create them. Or you can set it for members and leaders to create them. So that's one of the things. Um, and uh, there's a lot here, but it's basically uh, like kind of organized in four different sections. There's basic info. There's like just setting up the group here. Then there is promoting on Church Center. What do you want it to look like for the people that are about to sign up for this thing? Um, the third one is availability on Church Center. That's like when do you want things to show? And then lastly is event defaults. So we'll go through a little bit of each one of those. So on promoting uh, with Church Center, some things to point out is first, there is a con group contact. A lot of the times that is the leader information. You just want that to be the group contact. But if you're a large church and you have like a secretary or somebody who's in charge of small group ministry, you can set the group type, uh, group contact as someone who's not the leader. That's where that comes from. I had that in my group type default, so I didn't have to do that. I've made it really easy for myself, which is great. <laughs> um, the other one here is a meeting schedule, and this one's really cool. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna choose to show the meeting schedule, and then basically I want to say it meets weekly every Tuesday from uh, I could let's say 11 to 1. That sounds great. That's probably not real, but it makes it easy right now for me and you to show you what it actually does. Um, so those are the kind of two things that you need to look at here for Promote on Church Center. Um, then we'll go to availability. And this might sound confusing, but it's really not. There's two different things. There's enrollment status and there is visibility. So uh, enrollment status is basically, do you want to allow people to sign up or not? And visibility is, do you want it to be shown on Church Center? So why that is uh, a, a use case for that is saying like, I have a season of groups that is coming up, but I only want, uh, I want people to know what is coming, but I don't want them to be able to sign up yet. So I can show this group as listed, so it's going to show, but then I can make sure the enrollment is still set to closed. 
That way I can open the enrollment once it's time for the actual event. Um, and then there is a enrollment status or strategy. Sorry, there's two ways to do that. We definitely re recommend the request to join. What that means is when somebody requests that the leader then has to accept or reject them. Um, but the other way is to have an open sign up that basically allows anybody to sign up for the event and there's not that uh, accept or reject thing. This is not recommended um, because this is how spam happens at your church. When you have a website that is basically open to everybody at all times on the internet, <laughs> um, then anybody, someone who doesn't even go to your church can sign up for that group. And then the, the hard part about that is that they then immediately have access to all the members' information. And that's where spam comes from. They might sign up for an open sign-up group. They'll see all the members in there, and then they can start trying to contact them. Um, trying to get some of it. That's why we don't recommend it. But if you understand those r risks uh, and you're like a smaller church maybe or something like that where, you, where it's, not, it's, like a, it's not a hard problem to deal with for you, you can choose to open the sign up there. Um, and then there's auto close. Basically, this is like if I want to auto close on a specific date. So I want, uh, this is closing the sign up on a certain date. Um, so I don't want people to sign up for that group after a certain date like that. Or if you want to automatically close when it reaches when it reaches like 15 people. Um, but I also want to, there's like two ways to kind of handle large groups. One of them is to just close them down when it reaches a certain uh, amount of people. Another one is this ability for you, the admin, to receive alert if membership exceeds a certain amount of things. So uh, this example probably isn't as real, but let me pretend that I have like a 20 limit here, but I want to get notified when it hits 15 because if there's a lot of interest for that group, maybe it's time to split that group up, maybe to have another group for people to sign up because there's a lot of interest for it. Um, yes, and that alert, by the way, what where that shows up is in this little bell icon that you would that you have on the admin side of things. 